Oh, that was weird. Okay, thank you. I totally forgot you did that. It really gets confusing sometimes when the glitch is actually happy. Anyway, this particular one I'm going for Natsuki's run because I do know that Yori basically forces you into romancing her throughout this whole thing. But I want to try and get more out of Natsuki because I know she adds a bit more into the storyline to an extent. So I will be switching through this. Most of this dialogue is pretty much the same. But I want to at least get to the point where we read on the manga because I know that there's a scene that comes up when we're reading the manga with her. Which kind of indicates some stuff. Oh, I didn't realize she got that angry at Monica. Ooh. Interesting. Alright, so... As again, she's angry about the manga. She's like, stop moving my stuff, it's not nice. And I'm giving her Sayori's voice by accident, which I shouldn't. But, you know, she's talking about her manga collection. As... Again, don't judge a book by its cover. She's a very angry little pink-haired girl, isn't she? I wonder if she's Minnie Moon in disguise, especially with the hair. Okay, so now it's like, no, chairs won't work, it's not comfortable, and we won't be able to read as well, so... Come on, let's go sit on the floor, because the floor is way better for reading together. But no, this should be something here. She really is adorable, doesn't she? Look at that, with the pink eyes, and the pink hair, and the ribbons. Which is funny, considering she's got such a bad attitude, but... Again, part of it could also be because of, you know, the fact that she's abused by her father. Hard to say at this point. Unfortunately, we really don't learn as much about Natsuki as we do Yuri and Sayori, so... Alright. Ah, here we go. My dad would beat the ass out of me if he found this. So, that's kind of like an indication. We don't know entirely if it's Monica's doing, but I'm pretty sure it is. Especially with how she acts during the little date scene we have with her at our house. But if I recall... Yeah, she's falling asleep here. Hey, Natsuki. Yeah? Suddenly, Natsuki collapses into me. Hey! Yeah, that happens. Yeah, that's not creepy in the slightest. I can't even read what you're writing. Somebody put too much thickness on that text. Oh, jeez. Natsuki, are you okay? Here. Monica reaches into her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you not to give- Oomph. She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. No worry, Star. She's fine. Yeah, there's also the idea that she's malnutrition, too, that she doesn't get enough to eat at home. Which is even more surprising considering, you know, she's the cupcake maker. So you would assume she would get plenty to eat that, but then again, she might have very bad sugar intake. She might have diabetes for all we know. It's hard to tell. So I always keep a snack in my bag for her. Anyway, why don't we all share poems now? Alright. Well, let's share your first. Let's see, do you say anything new? No, you don't. Okay. I think at this point, everything else is kind of the same until I get later on, so... Editing away. Okay. Now we're getting into that part where they had that confrontation, which I ended up inadvertently skipping last time. If I you recall, Sayori was the one who broke this up last time. So what happens now that Sayori is out of the picture and isn't there to calm the girls down, as it were? So let's see, where do we get to a point where we get some new dialogue? Because I do believe there are some new dialogue in this area. Obviously, since Siri isn't here to stop it. 
Okay, I think I should get up to the point where they're like, Oh, your boobs got bigger because of the new guy. Let's see here. Yep, there we go. His boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Star started showing up. Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. Taking out your own insecurities on others like that. You really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me! Look who's talking, you wannabe engine, bitch! Edgy? Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone your mental age to comprehend. Say? Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know? If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute. The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Whoa, be careful, you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad, you already do, don't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the F is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let's style here everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Uh, suddenly, Yuri turns towards me as if she just noticed I was standing here. Yeah, everything kind of went all fuzzy on me, just saying. Star, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. Oh, dear. Okay. Now we're getting into the actual thing again. All right. Let's just... Monica, help! Break it up! Thank you! Could you... get out of my face, please? Thank you. Um... Hey, Star? Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay... Yeah, as you saw, basically, it's the same thing. Well, it's not the same exact thing, but yeah, without Sayori there, Monica can't keep control of the situation despite her god powers, and the girls just kind of lose their minds. And then she runs out crying, and then the day continues. I'm going to check on Yuri. She's having a panic attack. And she's like, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. And pretty much the rest of the day goes on like this, where it's like, we know you didn't mean it. And Natsuki will forget all about it tomorrow. Which she does. Just always something. And then it's like, go away. I want to stay a little longer. Nope, it's my age responsibility. Nope. Mine today, so go the hell away, please. I'm having a bad day. Just disappear. Go away. Shoo. Shoo. Get out of here, you... Yeah, that happens. Okay, so... I think the next part that I need to probably worry about is I'm... I think I'm gonna try and... Get the cutscenes that I didn't show of Yuri. Just show those off really quick. And I think that's really all I have to worry about in terms of this. But I don't entirely know. I don't know, I'm still kind of playing around with things. Oh, hello. I broke it. All right, here we are, where we're reading with Yuri, where she takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. And no, I don't want auto. And then we do the same thing with my, I do the same thing with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. As if I could feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Uh, to turn the page. Uh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. 
It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. Then you continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb, gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. She looks rather happy there, which is weird. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. <laughs> That's what you were talking about. Sorry, I thought you meant something else about her. Does she self-harm too? I don't know. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet, so I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Yuri, are you feeling alright? Uh, Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hands on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. I'm surprised she didn't want tea. Alright. Well, that just happened. Hi, Monica. How you doing? No, nothing happened. She was just acting a little strange. No, I don't know anything. Well, I do, but I don't. And then she's like, oh, I'm not really worried about her. I was just making sure you didn't do anything. Yeah, we were totally making out and ready to have sex in the middle of the club room. Yeah, that's totally what it's gonna go for. Just saying. Fair enough. Alright, let's go with Natsuki, because I think she has a little scene with me because I've been trying to just quote romance her and Yuri kind of pulled me away from her. Yeah, you end up getting this kind of weird text, which I believe is... I don't think it's binary. I think it was some other kind of code. I don't know. I have to re-look it up, but... Star, why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Do you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuri is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead, okay? You don't hate me, Star, do you? Do you hate me? Do you want to make me go home crying? Say a club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it. Please. Just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. That's all I have. Play with me. Play with me. Duh. I don't like the sound of the neck cracking. Oh, even when I know it's coming, I still get startled by this game. Yay. Alright, let's just get past this and get to the actual dialogue here. Oh, right. I forgot about that. I don't remember this poem. I don't remember this poem at all. A rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding. Bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope. Uh, something harness. A torn harness, maybe? Parabolic gearbox, expanding universe. Time controlled by slipping cogwheels. Existence of God swimming with open water in all directions. Drowning. A prayer wit written in blood. A prayer written in time... In... Time devouring snakes? With human eyes. A thread connecting all living human eyes. A kaleidoscope of holy stakes. Exponential gearbox. A sky of exploding stars. 
God is proving the existence of God. A wheel rotating in six dimensions. Forty gears and a ticking clock. A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks forty times every time it ticks every second time. A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. A time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of forty gears and opened human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing god, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. I wonder if that's related to the book. I don't know. I... Like, I'm always questioning, like, how much of this is, like, connected to the next game that Team Silvato is doing? Oh yeah, I forgot about that, that she found a pen that fell out of our backpack, took it home for safekeeping, and she liked the way it wrote. I mean, she admits later on that she touched herself with that pen, so... Yeah. So yeah, like, her insanity just kind of doubled at this point. Like, her obsession with us just got ramped up to a hundred. Oh hey, we got ourselves another poem. A man walked into a club. It hurt. In the club, there was a girl who liked him very much. They spent some time together, and then she liked him even more. One day, the girl realized she was in love with him. Before a disaster could happen, a third party interfered with her programming. Sadly, the girl hated herself for being in love. This contradiction caused the script to derail. The universe started to collapse, but she killed herself just in time. Is that supposed to be a reference to Sayori? I wonder. Oh, hey, what did you do to my my cursor? Hey, what did you do to my cursor? It turned into Sayori. Why? Fix it. Fix it. Thank you. I didn't even have to write a poem for that one. Interesting. All right. Well, okay, hi. You're a little close. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Oh, your eye just bled. That's nice. That's great. Don't have your eyes bleed there, Yuri. That's not cool. But yeah, this is a bit where they're talking about the festival, which never ever happens in this game, by the way. Too bad. That probably would have been a good time for, you know, an actual festival to occur, but they don't. But Natsuki doesn't want any new members because she just wants to get away from everything and you're crying blood. And Yuri's not sure what she wants and Monica's, you know, not sure what she wants. Everybody's very unsure of what everything is going on. And... Hi, Monica, how you doing? Aren't you just a, a lovely little lady? Aren't you precious? I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's been something I've been worried about. Yuri's been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean, but she's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her. If I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person that she'll listen to. I don't know why, but please try to do something. Maybe you convince her to talk to a therapist. I've always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. I just feel so helpless. So please see if you can do something to help. I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if, you've, if I have to. Just please try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she just wants us to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now, and that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend like I gave you a really good poem, okay? I'm counting on you. Thanks for reading. Okay. I changed my mind. 
Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's your own fault that she's un so unlikable. Can you hear me, Star? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Enough with the just Monica. Just keep breaking my game further and further as this keeps going. Do you have anything else to say? Oh, okay, you're just a little crazy. That's fine. I know. Okay, you can have it. That's fine. There. You can have it. It's nice. Yeah, it's a good girl. Yeah, you can have it. Just don't touch yourself with it. You're gonna get paper cuts. Yeah, that's, that's great that you, you know, want to keep it. I'm sure you'll take good care of Okay, thank you. I'm not surprised. Yeah, that's, that's creepy too. Giving yourself paper cuts so my skin oil gets into your bloodstream. I, I don't really want your poem. I'm sure it's terrifying. Yeah, that's pretty freaking terrifying. I can't read it at all, but I see there's plenty of blood. And I'm a hoping that's a tea stain, and it wasn't like you just peed on it or something. Hi, you were really close. You have Photoshop eyes. You know, I think I know of a certain flower that would be, you know, your best friend. Yes, I know. Yeah. Okay, good for you. That's, yeah, please go away. Please. Ooh, I got a new one. Things I like about Papa. I like when Papa comes home early. I like when Papa cooks me dinner. I like when Papa gives me allowance. I like when Papa spends time with me. I like when Papa asks about my friends. I like when Papa asks me about anything. I like when Papa gives me lunch money. I like when Papa comes home before sundown. I like when Papa cooks. I like when Papa gives me privacy. I like when Papa doesn't tell me how to dress. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my friends. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my hobbies. I like when Papa comes home without waking me up. I like when Papa keeps food in the house. I like when Papa uses his inside voice. I like when Papa leaves my stuff alone. I like when Papa accidentally drops coins in the couch. I like when Papa is too tired to notice me. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. I like Papa when... I like when Papa is too tired for anything. So clearly that is a Natsuki poem talking about how she doesn't have a great relationship with her dad. Clearly abusing her. Just saying. And then I think this is the bit where Yuri stabs herself. So I'm definitely skipping past that after she has her little breakdown here. Monica... I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling Star away from me every single time you're not included in something. Are you jealous? Crazy. Maybe you just hate yourself so much that you take it out on others. Here's a suggestion. Have you considered killing yourself? It would be beneficial to your mental health. Yuri, you're scaring me a little. Natsuki, let's just go. I don't think she wants us around right now. See, that wasn't very hard. All I want to spend is to spend a little time with him. Is that so much to ask? <sighs> hey, Star. Yuri's really something, isn't she? Yeah. Quite. And... Now you're gonna stab yourself, I know. I know, I know. No spending week with Monica. Don't listen. Come to your house. Yeah, that. Yeah, I know. There, there's definitely something wrong with you. It's Monica's fault. I mean, I'm sure you had, you know, you had problems before with the self harming and such, but Monica just made it worse for you, and it's not right. You know, you you kind of deserve better. Just saying. The scary part is that there are some girls out there who think this is a healthy thing to be obsessed with a guy and dedicating your entire life to them like that. No. 
Don't do that. That's not a healthy relationship. That's a codependency and you shouldn't do that. Be happy with yourself before you try to make somebody else happy. That's my star tip for the day. And you know, I'm telling you all this in the midst of a horror game where I'm about to watch a girl stab herself again. Oh boy! I hate this part, but let's get this over with. Yeah, okay, you good? Good. Uh. Every time I hear the knife go in, it just makes me flinch. Uh, it's not even that much of an act. It's just weird and creepy, and then we have to sit here and watch her decompose. I don't know what's wrong with you. Oh, why? Just why? Alright, moment of truth. Let's see what happens here. Okay, let's do this. But yeah, it was actually kind of interesting, like, looking through it, and everybody actually gets along. Like, Natsuki doesn't have to hide her manga in the closet, and her and Yuri just seem to be naturally talking to each other. It's weird that with Sayori as the president, she's actually, uh... You know, the club's actually a lot nicer of a place, which is surprising. But Monica did seem to be very inactive, too, so I don't know. But... Hopefully, we're gonna have the best club ever! Hey, Star. I really wanted to thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything. But the truth is, I already knew you were going to. <laughs> Actually, something else. I wanted to thank you for spending so much time with us all. Oh, there is, there is, there it is. See, that, I would have gotten that line if I hadn't gone through and did every single CG cutscene. And, like, romanced every single character. Otherwise, she would become self-aware and attacked. So, I'm definitely getting the best ending on this one. You work so hard to make each and every one of us happy. You comforted us through our hard times. And you helped us all get along with each other. Did you get it? Do you get it, Star? Because I'm president now, I understand everything. You really didn't want to mess, miss a single thing in this game, did you? No. I mean, I missed some, but not all of it. You saved and loaded so many times just to make sure you could spend time with everyone. Only someone who truly cares about the Literature Club would go that far. But, all along, that's all I ever wanted. For everyone to be happy and care about each other. <laughs> it's kind of sad, you know? After all you've done for us, there isn't much I can do for you in return. I've already reached the end of the game. Well, maybe I will see you in the next game. Who knows? Team Silvato is supposed to be working on some new project for next year. Maybe you'll be in it too. I wouldn't be surprised. Hopefully it's a better way though. Well, who knows, it might be a horror game, so... So, this is where we say goodbye. Thank you for playing Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm going to miss you, Star. Aw, oh, Sayori, you're a sweetheart. Come visit sometime, okay? We'll always be here for you. We. Yeah. We all love you. Aw. Take care, Sayori. But I think that Monica has one last little thing to say to us. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. <clears throat> Hi. Hello. Um, so, you know how I've been like practicing piano and stuff yes and not really any good at it yet like at all gotta start somewhere but i wrote you a song and i was kind of hoping that i could show it to you because i worked really really hard on it i'm sure you did uh, yeah yeah the music we hear throughout the entirety of the game actually It's a pretty song. Every day I manage to swear we could be with you. Sorry for your ears. And I went, there's fair there's but a poem of me and you. We close down into a dark puddle. The sudden wind made the way into his heart. 
But in this world of internet choices, what will it take just to earn that special day? What will it take just to find a special day? Ah, Yay! Now, there should be something at the end. A little different from usual. But yeah, you see, we're not deleting the pictures this time. We're gonna see every single shot. All in beautiful, beautiful HD, I don't know. <laughs> and then we got Yuri reading her book. And then there she is enjoying her chocolate. That was a weird scene, by the way. And there we got Natsuki with the cupcake making. Boy, Dan Silvato did a lot, but it wasn't just him. And yeah, only one vocal. And then there's Yuri with the towel. We had to do like every single one of those CGs in order to actually get the good ending. And then there's Sayori getting her blouse fixed up. And there she is where she's got a bad injury on her head and needs apple juice to cool it down. And there's all the little girls. They're all adorable in their own way. And there we go, there's a hugging of Sayori. But yeah, none of the pictures got deleted. And then of course, the final one with Monica. I get special thanks, I'm special. <laughs> but now she's deleting the rest of the game, unfortunately. Made with Love by Team Silvato. Now if I... Now, that was the actual ending, where she basically realizes, like, you know what? That's okay. Oh, we got a special moat from the developer himself. To a special player who achieved this special ending. For years, I have been enamored by this ability of visual novels, and games in general, to tell stories in ways not possible using traditional media. Doki Doki Literature Cub is my love letter to that. Games are interactive art. Some let you explore new worlds, some challenge your mind in brand new ways, some make you feel like a hero or a friend, even when life is hard on you. Some games are just plain fun, and that's okay too. Everyone likes different kinds of games. People who enjoy dating sims may have a heightened empathy for fictional characters, or they might be experiencing feelings that life has not been kind enough to offer them. If they are enjoying themselves, and that's all that matters. That goes for shooting games, casual games, sandbox games, anything. Preferences are preferences, and our differences are the reason we have a thriving video game industry. My own favorite games have always been ones that challenge the status quo. Even if not a masterpiece, any game that attempts something wildly different may earn a special place in my heart. Anything that further pushes the limitless bounds of interaction media, or interactive media. I extend my true gratitude to all those who have taken the time to achieve full completion. I hope you enjoyed playing it as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you for being a part of my literature club. Love, Dan Salvato. Aw, that was really sweet. And, you know, he's right. He is 100% right. Some people might take a look at this and say, Ew, a visual novel game, it's just for little girls. Why would anybody like this kind of stuff? But, everybody has their preferences. I'm not a huge fan of shooting games, but other people really love them, and that's okay. I'm really big into RPGs. Other people don't like it, but that's okay. Some people are happy playing the casual games like Candy Crush for hours on end. And that's okay. You do you. And I do me. And in this game, apparently, you can do a ton of things and still get very confused in the end. I definitely really enjoyed this game. Even through the horror and the nightmares, because I actually did get nightmares from this game, strangely enough. It definitely was interesting. 
I do think there, they could have done some more with it. More of an explanation of what's going on, and maybe figure out why it was that, you know, the club presidents were becoming self-aware, and why they were so obsessed with my character, or at least me as the player. It definitely was interesting, though. It definitely got me a few times with the scares, especially if you go into this completely blind. So I'm going to say, like, grab the bat, don't spoil it for anyone. I mean, it's already kind of been spoiled, knowing that it is, in fact, a horror game. And I think for that, I did get a little spoiled for. But in the end, I still screamed my head off for those horrible moments that happened. It still got me, and it was still quite interesting how it was even, like, messing with the game files and such. And the fact that it even has so many secrets in it that might be hinting at Team Silvano's next game. Who knows? But I definitely really enjoyed this. I hope Team Salvato do a lot more games in the future. Maybe not even a visual novel, but like a full-blown game. Hard to say at this point, but, you know, supposedly they might be hinting at a Project Libertina or something, which may or may not be related to Doki Doki later on down the line. We don't know yet. And I look forward to seeing what's going to happen in 2018 for what they're going to do next. So, congrats to Dan and the team of Team Salvato, who did a very well good job on this game. And thank you, at least, also for making it free to play as well, so that many people could enjoy it. This was definitely a unique game for 2017, and makes me look forward to what games will be coming out in 2018. But for now... This is Star Princess HLC Singh. Thank you very much for watching, and have a fond farewell. Goodbye, Doki Doki Literature Club. It's been interesting.